Hey everybody, how we doing today? Beautiful day here in the Florida Keys. Just beautiful. Uh, today was actually going to be a offshore day, but then I found out it's the uh, power, World Powerboat Races. And uh, I think two years ago was the last time I went on the same weekend and I almost got splattered by all the uh, big powerboats coming from Miami running down to Key West. It's like a poker run. I said, no, not this year. So I'm gonna stay inside. I'm gonna check out this new spot. I'm just across the street from the Sugarloaf Airport. It's kind of a empty lot here. Only tricky thing is that it's a uh, cutout for residential. So there's a immense drop off right there. So I gotta figure out how to get my kayak in the water. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna head out. There's a bridge that goes just over there and then I can get to the Gulf side because there's a bunch of spots on the Gulf side that I wanna check out. So. If I can get unloaded, that's the plan. All right, we're all loaded up. I brought the ladder out just for the hell of it. Maybe do a little bit of flat stuff. And uh, yeah, I think I could just slide it down and we should be all good or something catastrophic will happen. Well, let's do it. All right, let's see if it'll launch like the Titanic. Oh, go baby, go. Don't sink, don't sink, Ugh, don't let go. Oh, perfect. This is that like <laughs> pavement style granite, granite rock stuff, so I can't slide it on there. It'll just totally chew up the bottom of the kayak, but I think we're golden. Nice. That was easy. That's the uh, Sugarloaf Airport. It's primarily used for uh, skydiving, so if you're interested in that, you could do that in the Keys very easily. That's the entryway to the Five Mile Creek, but you can see how narrow that is. And I could just imagine the boats just running their asses off through there, and I'm not gonna take that risk. So there's another opening over here that's a shallower, which I don't think the boats can make, so I'm gonna cut through there. Ah, looks like some old Irma, Hurricane Irma remnants. Most of these are all cleaned up. Uh, is this soft sand? Uh, this is kind of soft. Oh, very soft. Yeah, it looks like someone's makeshift houseboat. <laughs> Didn't quite survive. Mangroves are already grown in it. Pretty big boat. Some nice sheltered paddling around here, although it's very thin. <laughs> so if you come this side route, I wouldn't try it in a boat at low tide. I don't think it, by the looks of it, it doesn't get much higher than this. But not too bad in paddling. And there we go, it opens up into the bay. Yeah, it was definitely a good idea not go, to go through that little narrow creek there because I saw two boats <laughs> heading past through there, although it is a beautiful Saturday, so more traffic than usual. Maybe not a big deal on the uh, weekdays, but yeah, on the weekends I'd probably uh, take a pass on it and just come through here. And we got all these areas to explore. The islands are my oyster you'll see a constant stream of boats heading that way because they're going out to Snipe Key, the Snipe Point. That's kind of where the uh, beach parties are. Sandbar parties. So they'll come right through here and then straight out there. So, But we're gonna hang a left and then follow along and hit the islands along there. I wanna check out this outlet because this is pushing a lot of water out here. So a lot of little bait activity. Just do a quick check here check out the opening to the Five Mile Creek and then start hitting some of the uh, smaller islands. Just a bit of exploring and then I'll come back sometime and uh, hit the points that I find real fishy. A very beautiful flat spot out here. This whole, whole section might be worth a morning run sometime. So that's fitting. Here's the marker to get into that Five Mile Creek. Perfect time for Veterans Day, so there's a salute to all the veterans out there. That's uh, Sugarloaf uh, Middle or High School there. 
But these are all the little islands that I want to try to investigate. And they go all the way out to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. But I just want to circle around each one of them, just see if there's anything interesting about them. Look for some flats fish. Just see how fishy they are, if it's worthwhile to coming out here again. The first two islands were just flats all the way around it. Just like this whole area is flats. This one's a little different, as you can see the marker. This is a uh, crossover line that runs through to connect the different flats. So if you're running a parallel with the Gulf, that's the run you would take to get all the way up to uh, Key Largo. So I'm gonna check this area out here. It seems to have the only deeper cuts around. I want to start over here and then work my way across. You can see here there's that little bit of deeper water there. So let's check it out. Here's that main passageway. Here's that main passageway cut through the mangroves. The highway basically. We'll cruise along, see if there's anything around. The first half of this long island was all just powdered out from the mullet. And this stuff is just bronzed out with all that stagnant water so there's nothing going to be over here and this is a long old island so we'll keep checking it out but i don't know how far i'm going to go i think that's a snook right there oh 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 he's coming for it oh he turned off of it Yeah, it's a snook. Oh, he was going for it too. Now he saw me. Ah, oh, it was a snook. Dang it. He had it right up against his nose. He just couldn't smell any scent. I actually was running that way and I saw him coming along the uh, weeds there. It was just a body gone. It wasn't a tarpon. It wasn't a kuda. So I thought it was a snook. So I leapfrogged him, came over, hit a, a point over there, and then somehow he snuck by me under the roots. I didn't see him. So I did another one, and then uh, I got him right here. Ah, he actually came out for it too. It just, he was within about an inch of it. I thought he was getting it in his mouth, but God dang it. Now that would have been awesome. Ah. <sighs> He was just nosed up to it. Wonder if I've got weeds or something. No, nope. just did not like it. All right, that's a promising sign. Okay, I spooked a tarpon right in that corner there. Nice little juvenile. I think because there's a cut right through there. So I'm gonna take my time running along this whole edge around here. Cause if there's one, there's generally more. I'm gonna just swing around and then see if I didn't spook him too much, but we shall see here. Okay, I think I see him. Just a shadow right there. Oh, perfect. That was right on him. That might be just a little stick though. That was perfect, it didn't even move. And it was just a stupid branch. Ah, oh, wasted, wasted all those beautiful casts. Another snook. He came off the flats and straight by me. I was just putting my rod away. Uh, snook, snook, snooks. Here's the main cut through this island. Got a lot of water pushing through here. But I want to stay on this uh, leeward side. Wrap my way all the way around it. So we'll curve on back. And here's the uh, break in the island here. So this is the end tip of it. The northern side of it. I'm just going to take a wrap around, see what it looks like on this other side. We've got the wind coming from this way, so it's a little tougher to fish, but not too bad. Instead of 
going farther out to the Gulf, maybe I'll hit that island and then mark, work my way back to that uh, outlet where I came in at. Yeah, check that out. A mullet jumped into my kayak. <laughs> Heard something knocking, I thought it was my motor. I was like, oh no. Look at this guy. Wow, this is a pretty solid chunker there. Look at you. What are you doing jumping in my boat? Uh. There you go. Ready? Lucky I'm a nice guy. All right, we're at this uh, island in the middle here. <laughs> I'm just going to do a drift along it. That whole thing is all mulleted out there, so maybe it attracted some fish from over here. So let us see. Oh, I think I got a whole bunch of bonefish right here. Yep. Come and get it. Oh, they're coming, coming. Oh. We gotta put an anchor here, man. There was the bones with all the little sharkies. Oh, there's more bones right here. Jesus. See him right there. They're just following that shark. He wants it. There we go. Got him. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Still on him. Thank God. Oh, did it come off? God dang it. I think there's a tarp in there. Holy crap, I found the spot. That was the bones. Dang it. There's just like two schools, one after another. All right, so we know where they are, finally. All right, so I think I'm just gonna drop anchor here and wait it out. Bonnet head, don't want you. Ah, dang it. I think I had too much drag on there. Okay, I think we're as far as that we're gonna go today. Sun's getting low, water's starting to drop. I don't wanna get stuck out here. Um, because of the way the wind is blowing, I'm gonna follow my tracks back and stay on the leeward side of those islands. Maybe run into more of the snook and that tarpon. We'll see. I'm kind of interested in taking a look at the Google Maps of this area where I found those uh, bonefish. Not quite sure if it's an actual spot or if they were passing through, but anyways, we're going to start going back and see if we can run into anything. Ah, uh, there's a sawfish. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to catch him. Oh, there he is, right there, if I can get ahead of him. There we go. That's the sawfish. You can see his nose on and the beak. Come back. Little guy though. Ah, awesome. Well, just ran over some bone fish. This is also the same spot I found the tarp in. One of the chances those things are going to stay around. There goes the tarpon. That's a smaller one than I'd saw seen her. Oh, there it is right there. Crap. Where's my anchor? Ah. 
outside of this being a corner, kind of dead ending here, and I imagine that's kind of like a little tarpon highway there, but uh, that's two tarpon in the same exact spot, two different time frames, so this I would pin in as a tarpon spot, that verifies that. The bonefish and then the, uh, the snook were kind of random, but these were here. So, mark that as a spot. Oh, there might be some right there. Where there's one, there's due to be more. Yep, that looks like two tarpon. Oh, I think they're on it. They're following it. Oh, oh, they're taking swipes at it. Oh my gosh, how am I? What the hell? No freaking way, what the hell? You gotta be kidding me. Let me guess, they're gone. Oh, no, they're right there. Right in front of you. Come and get it. Don't let that snapper eat it. Oh. They're both wanting it. Got it. Oh no, I missed it. Oh. No. He came up and mouthed it and Ticked it and oh, I missed them. They got jealous because that snapper was coming after it. Dang it! All right, I'm gonna leave these be. I've already messed with them enough. I think they're smart enough to not mess around. I could just occasionally see them pop up underneath there. They're staying low and the water's dirty, so it's tough to spot them. All right, we're gonna keep moving along and covering water and trying to get back before we get uh, stuck out here. Definitely pin it spot. I'm going to take this uh, smaller route, see if it goes all the way through, if I can make it play with anything in here. We made it through the creek. I could say that is not the most uh, relaxing mode when you're looking around you every 30 seconds to make sure you don't get run over, but it's not too long, so it's not too bad. I was hoping that that cut that I took would go all the way through on its own, but it ends up intersecting with this five mile creek, so you kind of stuck with it. So that's where I'm launched from. So I'm gonna actually just cruise this shoreline here a little bit. Uh, see if there's anything around and then call it a day. All right, we're all done loading up. Uh, no problems. I just used some blankets and uh, pillows to kind of protect the bottom. Now I'm just kind of doing some practice, practice casting. But uh, yeah, I'm going to head home. I'm going to uh, use Google Earth and kind of check out those spots where I was seeing those fish and try to see if it is a useful pattern, like there's a reason for them being there. Um, if it's just a random sighting, then that's not so great. But if I find a reason that they're there, then it's worthwhile to go back and check it out. So I'm just going to play around here a little bit, uh, practice my casting, and then uh, head on home. So let's go check it out. All right, let me show you what uh, my recon was today. Uh, here's a whole map of the lower keys. This is the uh, spot that I was targeting. It's on Sugarloaf Key. And if you zoom down, you can see this kind of open lot here. It's on Cypress Road, um, where it dead ends. 
I basically parked right here, launched, came over here right underneath this bridge, and then just went parallel with the uh, Sugarloaf Airport. Here is that uh, five mile creek there. Uh, if you didn't want to risk the getting running over by a boat, there's another option of a small creek right here that you could take to come out. Or you could do what I did is I just paddled through this thin uh, spots over here and came out on this corner over here. Uh, from there, I actually just looped around, checked out all these spots. The first areas I was checking out were these uh, lower islands here. Very shallow water, just all shallows, so I don't think they're going to be very good because they don't provide any protection for uh, fish to go during low tide. There was no deep cuts around any of these islands, so not so great. Had these dugout spots for the, um, the channel passes, but not so great otherwise. Uh, this is the uh, main island that I focus my attention on. Uh, basically, the lower half of it, this leeward side, was all mudded out from the mullet, so it wasn't even fishable, couldn't see anything. Uh, I'll focus in on this area. This is the most productive area I found. Uh, this corner here is where I uh, ambushed that first snook, got it around here, ran up here, missed them again, and then finally got that shot in this corner. Uh, right here is where I got that shot at that first tarpon or saw the first tarpon there. And then this corner over here is where I got those other two that almost uh, took my fly. So that's the tarpon corner there. Um, I actually saw a two snook here. Then after that, I came around and this is that uh, end of the, the key or island I had talked about. From there, I jetted over here to Squirrel Key, ran along this edge, and uh, a lot of uh, tun uh, tarpon tunnels, I call them, going all through here. But didn't see any fish there, but I think it's a good opportunity place. And then from there, I cut across here, and this is where I saw those bonefish. Not quite sure if they were just passing through or if I just hit it right when they're in their feed time. However, I think a spot that I really want to take a look at is this Mallory Key as well as this whole area here for those bonefish at a high tide. Uh, it's very sheltered. It's got that kind of rocky base with sand. Um, these passes have a lot of current through them, so that'll bring the food through. So I think uh, my next free day for this area, I'll make that a, a specific spot. Um, also, if I have more time, I'd like to do this whole leeward side of this island to check it out. Uh, possibly more snook, more uh, hidden up uh, tarpon. And then on a, another full day, I could do up here, although I've fished these areas before on a boat. But anyways, that was uh, the reconning uh, the new spot. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.